Okay, this is part three of our um, Iron Man 2, and this is pretty much called the wrap up. So, we're going to get into a uh, couple of things that uh, probably you know, most people about didn't pay attention to, but we did, you know, seeing how we uh, are critics and yeah. our viewers. Yeah. So, first one would be the, um, you know, how you feel about the Jarvis. Uh, being computerized, right? Instead of the uh, instead of a guy, right. you know the the, the butler we've seen right. through the comics and through the years or whatever. So I feel honestly, I feel like this. I like Jarvis being a computer, and uh, because you don't want to kind of conflict them, Tony Stark and Bruce Wayne putting them in the same world sure. Sure. type of world. Right. So you know, you know, Bruce Wayne has the butler who took care of him and. You know, that's cool. So you got Jarvis, which is a super computer. Right. Pretty much. Which I think I like that. So I give him a big thumbs up on switching Jarvis from a guy to a computer. True. Right. Right. And I, I agree totally with D. I feel that uh, they're doing the Jarvis as a mainframe, you know, total computer in charge of his house, his industry. I feel that's a better way to go. Uh, then the, the kind of domestic thing is a little played out in this day and time, too. So. Uh, and not the conflict too, just like what DC said, you know, which I had thought about, uh, which was the conflict with the DC Batman and Alfred type thing. Exactly. Uh, a few knuckleheads that I had talked to in the beginning, they was totally against. They felt Jarvis should have been there and all that. Jarvis to Jarvis to me was never an Alfred. No. Alfred is is is, is more like Batman's, you know, sad team. You know, he's there to help Batman protect them, to gang them. Jarvis was never that way, actually, with Tony Stark. He right. was just basically, really, in a sense, just a bubble. A bubble. That's how he was. Right. He was at, yeah, just a bubble. So I thought going with just the uh, the computer, you know, thing with Jarvis is that right there to me it, is priceless. It, the, whoever made the idea with that, you know, that which was perfect. Marvel actually in the beginning perfect. because it, it appeared in some of Iron Man comics, mm -hmm. uh, that was that that was clever. It was very clever, and I, I thought that was a great idea. You know, yeah. uh, to go with that. Yeah. So, so we, get, we get that thumbs up. Okay. We both agree on that. On that, and then now we go into the Stan Lee right. cameo, right. Larry King, which <laughs> you know I feel they should have done that. You know, I think they could have just let Stan Lee do normally just a normal role without being somebody right. else. He's, mm -hmm. They never had a name for him. You know, right. all the other Marvel movies. So and. He could have just been himself doing right. something, walking across the street, watering right. grass like in X Men right. uh, Three, you right. know, uh, something like that, just pulling a little girl away like in Spider Man One, you sure. know what I'm saying, for sure. something falling on him. Then, then not only that, they did a quick scene. Yeah. You know, you like, like two seconds, one second. It, 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 yeah. If uh, probably one point three seconds. Right, 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 right. True. You know, which to me I feel that was disrespectful. That's an insult. You know, honestly. Right. So, I mean, I don't know, you know how nobody else might feel about it, but that's just my opinion. Right. I feel like they should show Stan Lee a little bit more. Right. You know, I think the only movie that showed him more was Hulk 2. Right. It's the Incredible Hulk. Right. He, you know, went to the refrigerator and he grabbed the bottle, right. popped the bottle, drank the bottle. Right. And then and, 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 and part of the Man Takes a Four. He gave him like a little with the, yeah. mailman, with the mailman thing. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just... I think it was disrespectful in part of them, and I think Stan Lee should have more. Right, and I agree totally with D. You know, this this right here is a guy uh, that almost was like grandfather when it came to comics. You know, and, and you know, there's so many scenes that was unnecessary in movies that you can sit there and set aside for a guy who actually, if it wasn't for him, this movie would not have been made. Exactly. You know, Stan. I mean, you know, like Stan Lee is like the Godfather, actually, of comics. Yeah. yeah. Even though DC may be another brand and not the same company, there's guys like Stan Lee to make even DC the company that they are. Because even when you look at even like I'm just saying a competitor, even like DC, DC has no guy that you can post point, up. Point you know, thing is right. trying to say he the man. Right. You True. know, you can't do that. You True. Know, you know, you know, you had some guys who you, you know who. Work. I mean, other than Bob Kane True. and Jerry Siegel and right. Joel Schuster. Right, the DC F'd over. Exactly. Right. They F'd over <laughs> real bad. Right. You can't really kind of name other people out there who name standing up out there. Right, true. You know? So I think they should show Stanley 
more, you know, respect for right. the movies being just still being alive. Right. No, the other guys, Bob King, they did. Yeah, so right. They can't even have a cameo. They, they never did a cameo. They never did a cameo in none of the movies. None of right. the 70s, right. uh, um, Superman's early 80s. Right. Uh, none of the 90s film. Right. Or the Batman. And which they should have. Yeah, they, they, I think they should have. But, right. I, no, we just, we both agree that Stan Lee should have bigger role. Right. Period. True. And uh, now we get into the... Um, the Monaco scene? Oh, uh, yeah. The Monaco, uh, the Monaco Grand Prix scene. scene. Yeah. Which is the, um, what? The That's the introduction to, uh, when we first seen, uh, Whiplash, uh, you know, jump on the scene, where, you know, tan off, uh, the pit crew type, uh, you know, uh, uh yeah. underalls. And what he, you know, you know, you know, slash, uh, Iron Man, Tony Stark's, uh, car in half. I thought it was actually a superb introduction into the character. And not only that, even it showed uh, how Iron Man is always ready with the uh, briefcase the, or the slash attache case. Uh, a, a lot of people thought that this is something new with Iron Man. And, you know, if you're a comic reader, yeah. from the very beginning, Iron Man always had his briefcase with him to, to change into Iron Man. You know, that's something that, you know, every comic guy who followed Iron Man always had new. It wasn't nothing, you know, new to us. Shocking, it right? Nothing shocking. Right. A lot of guys, yeah, it's What's shocking. That? Right. What's that? Right. Right. Yeah. You know what it was. Right. Right. He that that's Iron Man. He always ready because he he don't know when someone will jump off. He always had his briefcase with him to jump into the Iron Man costume at will. I thought actually, as far as the introduction, that was great, and and it, 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 it came in kind of quick, like with maybe 15, 20 minutes into the movie, they showed the scene. Uh, I, I love the Whiplash character. I, I love the Happy Hogan, the Pepper Potts, having the, uh, Tony Stark's back to be ready for him, throwing the attaché case. I love how he kicked the car out the way, you know, and trying to save the day. It, it, it kind of threw you straight into a comic book scene. Right, right. It, 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 it threw definitely. you straight into a comic book scene, and then, plus, you know, who don't like to see the hero getting, you know. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta get a little ass kick. You, know, you gotta get a little ass kick. Yeah, That's yeah. what it is, you know what I'm saying? So, so when he kind of was tossing them around, right, right. I was, you know, like, okay, yeah. yeah right, right. Yeah, it was happening. Right. You know? You know, you know when the hero get whooped, it always makes for a bad movie. You know? True. That's true. just for real. That's true. So uh, we get a Monaco scene. Right. Oh, you know, and to talk about the suit. The suit, the way the suit came on. Right. Now, I, I give them big props for the how. When he threw the suit, uh, I mean, he threw the suitcase and it come back right. feet and it right. just, it went on him and you know what I'm saying, and it, right. and it formed up. Oh, that was, that was, that was tight. Okay. I like the effects in there too, the, the effects was... Yeah. So how do you feel about the suit in general? The suit in general, I, I don't like it. Okay. Because I don't like the look of it. It looked more like of a, a, a exo suit. Suit, okay. More of an exo suit than a real armored suit. Right. Right. You know, more of too many, you know, the shackles, right. things, right. I guess, like, pieced together. Like, actually, actually, it's kind of funny, getting back to these thing. Uh, actually, that suit was in the comic. Yeah. And uh, the fans had such an uproar about that suit that Marvel killed the suit. That was one of the most hated Iron Man suits, actually, in the comics. Uh, maybe somewhere on my Facebook or maybe on my Sanctuary Freaks uh, page, like, you know, I mentioned before in the past. I would post how the original suit really looked. It didn't look actually like that, but it looked very similar to it. It wasn't really a famous suit. Because I guess maybe all of us, we always look at Iron Man as being the Golden Avenger. Exactly. And that right there is totally sort of opposite of really what Iron Man really was. It went against the color scheme that we was used to. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, but like what these say, you know, I love that scene. Uh, to me, I get a suit a little more red. You know, the suit to me was okay. But I sort of like more the golden Avenger type suit, you know, yeah. more so. More so, right. So, all in all, we're doing our wrap up. Um, I give Iron Man a one up, one down, <laughs> and me personally, I give Iron Man number thumbs up. I enjoyed the picture. Uh, you know, don't be shocked. I was shocked when DS said that he didn't, you know, as much like the picture as I thought he would, though. But uh. But that's the cool thing about having, you know, guys with different opinions, though. But me personally, I love the Iron Man. I thought it was better than one to me. It's probably my uh, number one comic-related movie so far. Uh, and I give it, like, a little above uh, Batman and the Dark Knight. So, hey, but this is our first uh, uh, show. When we have some more shows coming on later on, it will be uh, under a different title. We'll let you all know and everything, you know, the deal. So this is uh, Will. It's Demetrius. We out. Yeah.
Talk to you later. See you.